Often differential equations become too complex that we cannot solve them using some of the methods that we've talked about thus far in the course. And so another strategy we can use is instead of solving directly for the answer, we can solve for a power series, an infinite power series that converges to the solution of the differential equation. So our question is going to be, how can power series be used to solve differential equations. And we're going to do a quick series review from some things that we should know how to do from calculus, or at least should sound familiar from calculus. First thing is we need to know what a power series is. A power series is the sum as n goes from 0 to infinity of some constant times x to the n. In other words, it's an infinite polynomial. If we plug 0 in, we get c sub 0 times x to the 0, which is just a constant, plus c sub 1 times x to the first, plus c sub 2 times x squared, plus c sub 3 times x cubed, and so on and so forth, all the way up to infinity. And it turns out this has a certain radius of convergence, which we can use the ratio test to establish, but we're not going to spend time on that in this course. But we're really interested in when this does converge, that converged solution can be a solution to our differential equation. We are going to need to, though, do some stuff to this power series. One thing we're going to be able to do is pull out a term. In other words, if I've got something like the sum as n goes from 1 to infinity of n, c sub n, x to the n minus 1. And let's say I don't want that first term in the series. I want everything else in the series, but we want to pull out that first term because it's in the way, if you will. Here's what I mean by that. Let's say for a moment this series represents a factory. And the n equals 1 tells us that the factory opens up at 1 o'clock. We're going to show what happens in that first hour the factory is running. In the first hour the factory is running, we're going to plug that 1 into the series. So we have 1 times c sub 1 times x to the 1 minus 1, plugging that 1 in. Plus, and then the factory is going to continue to run. It's going to run as a sum from 2 o'clock to infinity of our process, c sub n, x to the n minus 1. Doing a little cleanup on this first term, we would have c sub 1, x to the 0, which is just 1, plus the sum as n goes from 2 to infinity of n, c sub n, x to the n minus 1. Both of these represent the same thing. The first one is a factory that runs from 1 o'clock forever. The second one's a factory that starts at 2 o'clock, but the first thing has already been created for it. So it's been pulled out separately. That's what I mean by pulling out a term. Let's do the sum as n goes from 2 to infinity this time. Of 3n times n minus 1 times c sub n x to the n minus 2. This time we're going to let the factory run for two hours to see what it produces. We're going to pull two terms out because we want to. We'll look at the reasoning why when we get to the solving in just a minute. We're going to end up with 3 times 2 times 2 minus 1 c sub 2 x to the 2 minus 2 plus. Okay, now it's the next hour. Now it's 3 o'clock. So now we have 3 times 3 times 3 minus 1, c sub 3, x to the 3 minus 2. Plus, if I wanted to pull another term out, we would look at what's happening at the 4 o'clock hour, or we're just going to say everything else. As n goes from now it's 4 o'clock to infinity for this factory to work on 3n, n minus 1, c sub n, x to the n minus 2. I can clean that up a little bit. 3 times 2 times 1 is 3, oh, 6. c sub 2, x to the 0 is 1. 
3 times 3 times 2 is 18, c sub 3 times x to the first, plus the sum as n goes from 4 to infinity of 3n, n minus 1, c sub n, x to the n minus 2. So that's our first trick we need to be able to do with series before we get to solving, and that is the ability to pull out a term from a series, changing the opening hour of the factory. The next thing that we want to do is to be able to change the index. In other words, we're going to change the opening hour of the factory, but we want it to still produce exactly the same thing that it would have at a later or an earlier hour. So as we change the index, what we need to make sure we do is the index and the expression must go opposite directions. Here's what I mean by that. Let's say we've got the sum as n goes from 1 to infinity of n times c sub n x to the n minus 1. Right now this factory is opening at 1 o'clock because it starts at n equals 1. We want this factory to open at midnight or n equals 0. So what we're going to do is we can subtract 1 from the index but if we do that, we have to add 1 to the expression everywhere we see an n. And that gives us the sum as n goes from 0 now to infinity of an n plus 1, c sub n plus 1, x to the n. Now, if I were to look at this term by term, we'd find out both these factories are producing the same thing, even though they open up at different hours. On the left, the factory in black there, if I were to plug in the first index of 1, we would end up with 1 times c sub 1 times x to the 1 minus 1, plus, in the second hour, n equals 2, we would have 2 times c sub 2, x to the 2 minus 1, and so on. In other words, if I clean that up, we would end up with c sub 1 plus 2 c sub 2 times x, and so on. The other factory opening up at midnight is going to produce the exact same thing, though, because of how we shifted the expression and the index in opposite directions. Plugging 0 in, we get 0 plus 1 is 1, times c sub 0 plus 1 is 1, x to the 0, plus... Now it's 1 o'clock, so now we plug 1 in. 1 plus 1 is 2, c sub 1 plus 1 is 2, x to the, it's 1 o'clock, so 1 power, and so on. Simplifying, we get c sub 1 plus 2, c sub 2, times x plus, and so on. And you see we actually end up with the exact same thing on both sides. We've shifted the index to start at a different point. Now, the reason they have to go in different directions, students often ask, what we're really doing is we're replacing n with n plus 1, which means on the sum, I've got n plus 1 equals 1 to infinity. And so if we subtract 1 from both sides, we end up with n equals 0. And that's why it fe they go opposite directions. We've just replaced n with n plus 1, and we've done the solving on the index. Let's do this one more time, make sure we're good at it before we get to actually solving with series. Let's say we've got the sum as n goes from 2 to infinity of n times n minus 1, c sub n, x to the n minus 2. Okay, let's also take this down to n equals 0, which means to do that I have to subtract 2 from the index, which means I'm going to add 2 everywhere I see an n. And now we have the sum as n goes from 0 to infinity of n plus 2 times n plus 2 minus 1 becomes n plus 1, c sub n plus 2, 
x to the n plus 0. And now we've got an equivalent expression, the same factory making the same stuff, but starting at a different hour. OK, that's nice and all. But how does that help us actually solve differential equations with series? Well, the main thing comes from some theory that we're going to say if we have an ordinary point, and we'll talk about that more in tomorrow's video, we can let y equal the sum as n goes from 0 to infinity of c sub n x to the n. And then we're going to figure out what c sub n is equal to, and then we can express our solution as this infinite series that we know is going to converge to the solution. Well, if y is equal to that series, you remember from calculus, we can take the derivative of a series term by term. What's interesting is with this power series, the first term is a constant. If you plug 0 in, we get c sub 0. Well, the derivative of 0, is, the derivative of constant is 0. So when we take the derivative, the first term is going to go away. And so we'll go from n equals 1 to infinity of, taking the derivative of the expression, we have n times c sub n x to the n minus 1. And then if we want the second derivative, we lose another term for the exact same reason. So the second derivative goes from 2 to infinity of n times n minus 1, c sub n times x to the n minus 2, just using that exponent rule. These substitutions are going to make it possible to solve for our power series solution. The process that we're going to want to go through is first we're going to make the exponents match. on every single term. Then we're going to make the index match on every single term. Then we can combine all the terms into one big series and set the coefficients equal to 0. And then finally, we can find c sub n by solving for the larger subscript. Let's look at some examples so we can see this process work out. Let's look at y prime minus, or let's do plus 2y equals 0. We're going to use the substitutions. This substitution for the power series derivatives is going to work for every single one of our power series problems that are around ordinary points. So when we see a y prime, we should automatically replace it with the sum as n goes from 1 to infinity of n times c sub n x to the n minus 1 plus we have a 2 times a y which we know we can replace with the sum as n goes from 0 to infinity of c sub n x to the n equals 0. All right, once we've made that substitution process wise we're going to make the exponents match. Right now we have an x to the n minus 1 and we have an x to the n. To make the exponents match, I need to add 1 to this first exponent, which means I'm going to add 1 to all of the n's in the expression, which means on the index I have to go the opposite direction and I have to subtract 1. See, we're making the index match. So now I have the sum as n goes from 0 to infinity 
of an n plus 1, c sub n plus 1, x to the n, plus, I'm going to go ahead and pop that constant in, the sum as n goes from 0 to infinity, to c sub n, x to the n, equals 0. Now our exponents match. Our next goal is to make the index match, and we can do that by pulling off terms we don't need. This one's nice because they both actually already match, so there's nothing we need to do there. So we can combine into a single sum. We've got the sum as n goes from 0 to infinity, and I'm going to, at this point, factor out the x to the n. And what's left is n plus 1, c sub n plus 1, plus 2, c sub n, equals 0. Now we can set the coefficient of x to n equal to 0. Because if all of the coefficients are 0, times anything will always equal 0, and this sum works out to 0. It's the easiest way to do it, which means n plus 1 times c sub n plus 1 plus 2 times c sub n must equal 0. We're going to find a pattern for c sub n by first solving for the larger subscript. C sub n plus 1 is a larger subscript. We'll solve for it by subtracting 2 C sub n and divide by n plus 1. And then what we can do is we can run this sum trying to find a pattern for the generic C sub n. Here's what I mean. The sum starts at 0. So when n equals 0, this pink expression becomes c sub 0 plus 1 is 1 equals negative 2 times, and I'm going to pull that c sub n out as a separate expression, over uh, n plus 1, 0 plus 1 is 1, and we're multiplied by c sub n, c sub 0. Okay? When n equals 1, what happens? Well, we have c sub 1 plus 1 is 2 equals negative 2 divided by 1 plus 1 is 2 times c sub 1. But we said c sub 1 was negative 2 c sub 0 over 1. What happens when n is equal to 2? Well, then we have c sub 3 equals negative 2 over 2 plus 1 is 3 times c sub 2. Well, c sub 2 is negative 2 times negative 2 times c sub 0 over 2 times 1. And you start to kind of notice a pattern. It becomes most apparent on the c sub 3. Notice my denominator is 3 times 2 times 1. You should recognize that as 3 factorial. My numerator is negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2. That's negative 2 to the third power times c sub 0. Does that pattern stretch for all the cases? Notice the c sub 2 was negative 2 to the second times c sub 0 over 2 factorial. c sub 1 was negative 2 to the first power times c sub 0 over 1 factorial. If we see this pattern developing, we should be able to develop the structure of any c sub n. c sub n is, using our pattern, negative 2 to the exponent that matches the term number, n, times c sub 0 over a factorial that matches the term number, n factorial. Now we have our expression for c sub n. Remember, our big substitution was that y is equal to the sum as n goes from 0 to infinity of c sub n times x to the n, a power series. We have just solved for our c sub n. We can now say y is equal to, and I'm going to grab the constant and pull it 
out in front of the sum, just because we can, as n goes from 0 to infinity of negative 2 to the n over n factorial times our x to the n. What's interesting about this result, if we do a little bit of simplifying, since both of these guys have an n power on them, we can write this as c sub 0 times the sum as n goes from 0 to infinity of negative 2x to the n all over n factorial. And if you remember your power series from calculus, that one should look familiar. That is e to the negative 2x is what it converges to. And so if we had solved this original problem using our methods from chapter 1, which we very well could have, this is a simple example to establish the process, we would have ended up with c times e to the negative 2x as our solution. Now it won't always come out to a nice pretty solution like that, so this green section is really what we're looking for today, is solving for y in terms of that power series. So let's see if we can take a look at another example where we do that process again. Let's try and solve something a little more involved. How about x minus 3 times y prime plus 2y equals 0? Well, again, we can replace the y prime with the sum as n goes from 1 to infinity of n c sub n x to the n minus 1 plus 2 times the sum as n goes from 0 to infinity of c sub n x to the n equals 0. I'm going to do a little bit of cleanup here and I'm going to distribute this sum onto both of these terms. And as we do, we're going to stick the constants inside the sum to help us work with it. So we end up with the sum as n goes from 1 to infinity. Multiplying the x through, we get n c sub n x to the n, adding 1 to the exponent, plus the sum as n goes from 1 to infinity of, multiplying by negative 3, negative 3 n c sub n x to the n minus 1 plus the sum as n goes from 0 to infinity of 2 c sub n x to the n equals 0. Now our first goal to get this all written as a single sum is to make the exponents match. We've got x to the n twice, so we're going to pick on the x to the n minus 1 and make it match by adding 1 to the n. We're going to add 1 to all the n's, which means on the index we have to go the opposite direction and subtract 1. So now we have the sum as n goes from 1 to infinity of n c sub n x to the n plus the sum as n goes from 0 to infinity of negative 3 times n plus 1 times c sub n plus 1 times x to the n plus the sum as n goes from 0 to infinity of 2 c sub n x to the n equals 0. Now we have three factories. Two of them are opening up at midnight or 0 o'clock. One of them is opening up at 1 o'clock. If we're going to write these as a single sum, we're going to run the first two factories for an hour we're going to pull out the first term from both of those factories. And then all the factories will together be open at 1 o'clock. That's what we're going to do. So from the middle sum, plugging 0 in, we get negative 3 times 0 plus 1 is 1. C sub 0 plus 1 is 1. X to the 0. Plus, running the, second fact, the third factory for an hour, we're plugging 0 in. We've got 2 times c sub 0, x to the 0. Plus, now all three factories are open from 1 to infinity. And so when we do this, we now can factor out the x to the n from each of the terms 
and look at the coefficient that's left over. n c sub n minus 3 times n plus 1 c sub n plus 1 plus 2 c sub n equals 0. Now we're set up to find our pattern and solve for our general c sub n term. First, I'm going to look at the front set of terms. If I simplify, that's negative 3 c sub 1 plus 2 c sub 0. And remember, all the coefficients have to add up to 0. So if I make that equal to 0 and solve for the larger subscript, c sub 1 is equal to negative 2 c sub 0 divided by negative 3, which makes it a positive. Also on the sum, we've got the same thing. I'm going to group the c sub n's together and factor out the c sub n, which leaves behind n plus 2 times c sub n minus 3 n plus 1 c sub n plus 1 must be equal to 0. If we solve for the larger subscript, we get the expression c sub n plus 1 is equal to negative n plus 2 times c sub n divided by negative 3 n plus 1. And the negative and a negative will make it a positive. We're now ready to run our sum to find a pattern. Notice the sum is starting at n equals 1 this time, so we're going to run it from n equals 1. When we do that, we get c sub 1 plus 1 is 2 is equal to n plus 2, 1 plus 2 is 3, divided by 3 times n plus 1, 1 plus 1 is 2 times the c sub n, which is our previous term, c sub 1, which we already have an expression for, 2 c sub 0 over 3. What happens when n is equal to 2? Well, then we have c sub 3 is equal to 2 plus 2 is 4 over 3 times n plus 1, 2 plus 1 is 3 times the c sub n, which is 3 times 2 c sub 0 over 3 times 2 times 3. The denominator might take a little bit more thinking to find the pattern there because there's some extra 3's. Actually, we might even be able to simplify a bit, but let's see what happens at n equals 3. We have c sub 4, which is n plus 2, 5 over 3 times 3 plus 1 is 4 times the previous term which is 4 times 3 times 2 c sub 0 over 3 times 3 times 3 times 2 times 3. All right let's see if we can find some patterns. First thing I'm going to do is see what happens when we simplify. That's kind of nice we get c sub 0 over 3 uh, we can divide out a 3 and a 2, and that's going to give us 4 c sub 0 over, and we have 3 times 3 times 3, which is 3 cubed. On the last one, we've got, reducing out, we've got the 4, 3, and 2 that can come out, a 4, 3, and 2 that can come out, so we've got 5 c sub 0 and 1, 2, 3, 4, 3 to the 4th power. Well, it almost looks like a pattern is happening, except something went wrong on that first term. Notice the exponents as I go up count down 4, 3, should have been 3 squared. Also notice the constants in, in the numerator went down 5, 4, it should have been a 3. What if I multiplied by a 3 on top and bottom? Now the pattern does hold true. Now I can see that c sub n is equal to 
the numerator is always 1 more than the term number, n plus 1, c sub 0, over 3 to the, the exponent of 4 is the term 4, the term number is the exponent. Now, any terms that we did not check the pattern on, we have to double check that it still works. We have the c sub 1 term in here. Sometimes that extra term that came from the constants that we pulled out, sometimes it does not follow the pattern. So let's plug in 1 and see what happens when we plug 1 into this formula. Just to test, c sub 1 in the formula would be 2 times c sub 0 over 3 to the first. This time it does work. If it didn't work, we'd have to account for that term separately and pull it off. But it did work, so no need to fret, no need to frown. We have that y is equal to, as we defined it, the power series n from 0 to infinity of c sub n x to the n. So in our case, y is equal to our c sub n. I'm going to replace it with this blue c sub n, but I like to pull that c sub 0 out front because it's just a constant, times the sum as n goes from 0 to infinity of n plus 1 over 3 to the n times our x to the n. And we could leave it just like that if we wanted to. Another thing you could consider is you could combine the exponents together n plus 1 times x over 3 to the n. Both of those are equivalent to each other. Either one would work. This is the solution to our differential equation written as a power series. Let's try one more example. This time I want to do an example with a second derivative in it. Let's try y prime prime plus y equals 0. With the second derivative, we would expect to see two constants, c1 and c2, or how we normally count here with series c0 and c1. How is that going to work? Well, let's take a look at it. Based on our power series substitutions, we know that y double prime is n going from 2 to infinity of n times n minus 1 c sub n x to the n minus 2 plus y, which is the sum as n goes from 0 to infinity of c sub n x to the n equals 0. First thing we like to do is to make the exponents match. We have an x to the n, so we're going to add 2 to our exponent to make that exponent match which means we're going to add 2 to all of the n's, and on the index we have to subtract 2 to maintain that balance without changing the expression. So now I have the sum as n goes from 0 to infinity of n plus 2 times n plus 1 c sub n plus 2 x to the n plus 0 plus the sum as n goes from 0 to infinity of c sub n x to the n equals 0. Now that the exponents match, we check to make sure the index matches. Sure enough, these indices do match, so we can combine them into a single sum. This time we don't have to pull off any terms because the factories are all open at 0 to infinity. We're just going to factor out that x to the n leaving behind n plus 2 times n plus 1 c sub n plus 2 plus c sub n equals 0. And we know our coefficients have to be equal to 0. n plus 2 times n plus 1 c sub n plus 2 plus c sub n has to equal 0. We'll solve for the largest, c sub n plus 2, which is negative c sub n over n plus 2 times n plus 1. And I'm actually going to switch the order just to make life easier. We'll make it n plus 1, n plus 2.
As we start to list out our terms, you see we have n plus 2, which means we're going to be adding 2 to our terms, not adding 1. To account for all of our numbers, I'm going to make two columns then, one for the odds and one for the evens. We'll start with n equals 0, because that's where the series starts. And then I'll let n equal 1. And then we'll let n equal 2, n equal 3, n equal 4, and n equal 5. Separating the evens from the odds, because those are going to be the related constants. And you can kind of see how that plays out here. When n equals 0, we have c sub 2 is equal to negative 1. I'm going to make that negative 1, because I always pull that c sub n out. Over 0 plus 1 is 1. 0 plus 2 is 2 times c sub 0. For when n equals 2, we have c sub 4 is equal to negative 1 over uh, 2 plus 1 is 3. 2 plus 2 is 4 times the previous term, which is negative 1 c sub 0 over 2 times 1. When n equals 4, we have c sub 6, which is equal to negative 1 over n plus 1. 4 plus 1 is 5. 4 plus 2 is 6 times the previous term, which is negative 1 times negative 1 c sub 0 over 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. We start to notice this pattern with the evens. Since these are all even subscripts, instead of just writing c sub n, I'm going to write c sub 2n to show this are all the even. Now I want to be careful here, very careful. Now whenever I talk about n, it's half of the subscript. So for the last one, n would be 3. For the 4, n would be 2. And for the 2, n would be 1, half the subscript because the subscript I'm writing here is 2n, okay? Noticing my negative ones, there's exactly the same number of negative ones as there are the subscript. We have a c sub 0, and the denominators are all factorials, again, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Well, the 6 is starting at double the subscript, so we have 2n factorial. So it seems like whenever we have an even subscript, we can follow this pattern. But when we have an odd subscript, it's going to work out a little bit different. Let's see what happens with the odd subscripts. When n equals 1, we have c sub 3 is equal to negative 1 over 1 plus 1 is 2. 2 plus, two, uh, 2 plus 1 is 3, times the previous term, which is just c sub 1. When n equals 3, c sub 5 is equal to negative 1 over 3 plus 1 is 4, 3 plus 2 is 5, times c sub 3, which is another negative 1 times c sub 1 over 2 times 3. When n equals 5, we have c sub 7, which gives us negative 1 over n plus 1. 5 plus 1 is 6, and 5 plus 2 is 7, times c sub 5, which is negative 1, times negative 1, times c sub 1, over 5 times 4, times 3, times 2. This looks very similar to the other set, but I want to notice the key difference is the constant we're multiplying by now is c sub 1, not c sub 0. This is our second constant of integration that comes out of the second derivative in our problem. So now we're dealing with odd subscripts. We're going to write that as 2n plus 1, because we start at c sub 1, equals... Again, I'm going to notice with 2n plus 1, the n's that we're talking about are 1, 2, and 3. So that matches that our exponents, our numerators, sorry, are negative 1 to the n times a c sub 1 all over the 7 
is where the last factorial starts, which would be expressed as 2n plus 1 factorial. So how do we put this together to express our solution for y? What we're going to do is we're going to separate the odd and even exponents on x. Pulling out the constant, we would have c0 times the sum as n goes from 0 to infinity of negative 1 to the n times x to the 2n, because these are our even exponents, over 2n factorial plus, pulling out the second constant, c1, times the sum as n goes from 0 to infinity of negative 1 to the n times x to the, these are the odd exponents, 2n plus 1, over 2n plus 1 factorial. This, then, is our convergent power series solution to y prime plus y equals 0. But you should recognize each of these power series from your study of calculus. That first power series is the cosine of x. That second power series is the sine of x. And if you had solved the equation like we did in our second unit as a linear second order differential equation that was homogeneous with constant coefficients, you would have found the solutions were c1 cosine x plus c2 sine x, or equivalently, the expression we ended up with this time. Now we're keeping the expression simple right now as we're getting used to this process, but what we're ultimately interested in finding is that orange solution set. And the way you get good at these is you practice these. We're going to spend a couple days practicing these, identifying the pattern, identifying the process. So take a look at the homework assignment and let me know if you have any questions.